Executive Director of the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce and welcome to the Shop Local Show on NORCAM. Thank you so much NORCAM for hosting the Chamber and a local business um, to highlight what is going on here in town. Today I'm joined by Dr. Judy who is a dentist at Inertia Dental and first I'd like to welcome Judy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, hi Lisa, hi everyone. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be with you. This is our first Zoom interview, so we're both going to learn a little bit along the way, but I'm glad that we're able to continue this series where we focus on locally owned businesses and let people know about what they can expect when they come to Inertia, Inertia Dental and um, learn more about you and your practice and areas of focus. So with that, I would love to hear about your background in education, Dr. Judy. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I actually went to dental, I did my undergrad um, at UConn, um, and I did dental school down in Florida, and then I did a year of residency um, in South Carolina. Um, now for dentist, residency is not required, I just wanted to torture myself for a year, mm -hmm. but it was, it was a really good experience. I got to do a lot of complex full mouth rehab cases, um, and I also volunteered when I was down there um, at some extraction clinics and did some work with the special needs clinics at that university. So. It was a really good experience. I'm glad I did it, even though it was hard, but um, it, it had me leave knowing a lot more and being able to handle a lot more, um, especially so early on in the game. And then I moved to Boston in 2017, and I worked in Malden for a few years, and I had a few associateships here and there. Um, really nice practices, but not really somewhere I wanted to end up necessarily. Um, just, you know, a lot of older buildings, older ways of doing things, and I'm all about the patient experience. So when I looked into if I wanted to buy a practice, like an existing practice, or start from scratch, um, financially, it always makes more sense to buy an existing because you have the patient base to kind of support your staff and support everyone as you build. But um, I decided to take the hard route there as well and do uh, the scratch start. Um, and so here we are. We opened about two weeks before corona shutdowns and then we closed and reopened again so we made it but we're still building nice so tell us about what's different about your practice in terms of you know the newer way to do it as well as just updated practices and facilities and patient care yep so um the building itself is brand new um which worked out really well considering everything going on in the world. Our air system, I don't have to worry about like changing out things and having circulation. Um, but in addition to that, we have, you know, 3D scanners instead of taking those goopy impressions of the mouth. We have TV screens so you can see pictures of what's going on in your mouth. You can see the x-rays yourself. Like I don't want to have any question about why we're doing something. I want them to know what's going on. Um, if they want to know. We also get a lot of really nervous patients. Everyone comes in and says, I hate the dentist. And those are honestly my favorite patients because I get to be the one to turn them around. Um, so we do have certain amenities too, you know, like the chairs, the dental chairs have a massage function and we have Netflix on the ceiling. Um, and then we have our comfort dogs too, Sage and Echo. They help the patients out who are really nervous and just need a little comfort in the room. So they're available by request. <laughs> Wow, that sounds great. You had me at Netflix on the ceiling and massage chair. That's great. Yeah, yeah it's just about that patient experience, you know, and then obviously the cleanliness, like our, our sterilization center is 13 feet long, like I wasn't going to mess around with that, um, even before everything that happened. So I don't know, it's just nice to have everything new and not just inherit things from another dentist, you know, starting a business and everything. Nice. That's interesting. Um, Tell me a little bit about some of the work you've done with new patients with local charities. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, we do have our comfort dogs in the office, so I'm, I'm a huge dog lover. Um, and we do have a partnership with uh, BNR's Rock and Rescue here in North Reading. 
So for every new patient we see, we donate to um, a dog that gets adopted. Um, and I actually, I know that the Rock and Rescue, um, they, they work with dogs from Puerto Rico and Thailand. They're really big on, um, actually the dogs from Thailand, they're from the meat trade. Um, so a lot of the dogs they rescue, they're, they're not just dogs that are like on the street and happy. They're dogs that are like being abused and need help and need a place to live. So it's really cool the things they do. Um, like I know they have a cookie fundraiser coming up. I think it's with a uh, bag of Wakefield. So like you can buy a cookie and help support. Um, and then they also have um, their annual giving tree at the end, end of November. I think they're opening that up this year. So anyone who's watching, if you want to support a really great local cause, um, please look at the Rock and Rescue. They do a lot of great things for a lot of dogs that need help. So it's great. Yeah. And that's actually run by Francine Coughlin, our former president of the chamber and eight year board member. So that's a nice surprise. I didn't realize you were um, connected with that charity, which is so important and very timely with all the things that are going on in the world. We need to hear about people giving back and sort of some good news along the way. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm nowhere near at the level of Francine. She's an amazing human being and she does so much for the community, but I'm just trying to help where I can. So it's, it's nice to give patients, A, that awareness, um, and hopefully we can get some adopters out of it, but B, um, just to support a local cause is always a good thing. Of course. So back where we can. <laughs> so going back to the comfort dog, you don't have them in the office for every appointment. It's something you have to request in advance. Um, you do have to, I actually have them here. Do you want to see them? <laughs> They're actually sitting right next to me because I'm in my office. Oh, they're so cute. So they, they pretty much just sleep all day. And then if someone requests them, I can bring them out on a leash. But I, I don't let them like freely walk around or anything like that. They're only by request. But they're usually in the office. Nine times out of ten, they're sleeping. <laughs> they're really lazy. So are you raising those comfort dogs as well? Uh, they, they're my dogs. They're oh, my, wow. Yeah. Okay. So. I didn't appreciate that. That's neat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're great. They're uh, super fast outside and really lazy inside, so the patients love them. They just want pets. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to relax before any kind of an appointment. But certainly yeah, it, it really makes such a difference. We had um, a patient the other day with special needs, um, sensory issues on the spectrum, and he, I guess, the, his mom told me that he had, uh, like, the last dental appointment, he was running up and down the hall screaming, and it just wasn't working, and he was so good in the chair. We were able to do the appointment, and the mom had told me, like, that she was almost in tears with how well he was doing. So that kind of thing, like, just having a dog present makes such a difference for some patients, and it's really rewarding. So dogs really make such a difference in people's lives, so it's important to give back to them. <laughs> You know. I agree. That's great. Um, so do you treat both adults and children? I know you mentioned um, someone brought their son in. Yep. Yep. We treat all ages. So um, yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I love the fact that people can go and take care of a necessary appointment and, you know, give back and enjoy a massage and watch their, you know, favorite show at the same time. Yeah. That's we're trying best. to cover all our bases. <laughs> yeah. Was there something that particularly drew you to the space that you have chosen in North Reading? Um, so we looked at a few different areas. Um, one of the things with North Reading is just there's more patients than doctors. So like there, there was more of a need for a doctor in this area. Um, but also the community, like, you know, I, I live in the North Shore and North Reading, like since coming here, I got to say is really special. I've never seen a community like this, this close to a major city. Um, and I've lived in a lot of places and I just can't believe how supportive everyone is like even just on the North Reading Facebook group and everything like, you know, there's the occasional drama that you see, but for the most part, people are really supportive of each other and willing to lend a hand and really supportive of small businesses, which is so important in today's climate, um, especially with all the shutdowns and everything going on. Uh, so it's, it's really great. I'm really happy that we ch ended up here that we chose this location. That's great. And it's neat. It's nice to know that it was like a whole new build out. Um, I think in your particular area, cleanliness and newness means even more than it might in a different kind of business. So yeah, for sure. And most of the, um, the rules, I guess that you could say that we had for cleanliness really still apply. There's just a few changes. Um, 
with the new type of disease, but there have always been respiratory diseases that we've been worried about. So I think most dental offices were pretty much prepared for it. Um, but being newer, it was nice to have the equipment all updated and just knowing that not only are we prepared, but we've already been going above and beyond. So um, we didn't have to change too, too much, luckily. That so, makes sense. When yeah. I think about masks and gloves, the dentist is one of the um, industries or going to the dentist. It was a place where you saw them all the time anyways. So exactly. you're probably best suited because you were familiar and already were using them in your day to day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually, <laughs> I, I always joke with my husband about how um, the stores were all running out of soap and hand sanitizer um, in the beginning. And I was like, what, were people not washing their hands before? Like, I don't understand. But everyone was just stocking up, you know, masks. Wow. So different times. <laughs> Agreed. So I wanted to hear a little bit about your volunteer work that I know you did fairly recently in Arizona. Could you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, no problem. So I um, did some work with New Horizon Dental Center in Arizona. Um, and what it is, is it's, it's both a teaching and a volunteer situation. Um, and what I mean by that is the doctors who run the clinic um, basically will help set up um, free implants to veterans and people who've suffered abuse and people who um, can't afford implants. Um, so they, and while doing that, they also teach more advanced techniques. So I went last month um, and I placed a lot of implants on a lot of maybe patients. Um, and it was a really good experience because I was helping someone and then I was also just getting more advanced training skills. I love surgeries and uh, we got to do some really complex grafting and like multi-unit implants and things like that. So tooth replacement for a population that really needed it and really deserves it. So it was, it was a good experience. I would definitely go back again. How long were you down there for? It was a week long program. Um, and then, yeah, it, I came back and, you know, did the COVID test and everything and we're all negative. So, but it was, a, it was a good experience. I think it's tremendous that you're traveling to different areas of the country to help given the, you know, extra precautions and testing and such that's required. Yeah, it's definitely a little nerve wracking because I will say other states aren't as serious as uh, New England. Um, so I'm glad I tested negative, but I was a little worried just seeing people aren't really wearing masks around the country. And that's, that's a whole different story. So I would love to hear a little bit more about when you open the practice and your grand opening plans, because I know there's a, an interesting story there to share. Yeah, so it's, it's been a bit of a journey opening up our practice. Um, to begin with, we had a lot of delays with construction um, just because the town is very strict, which is great because we want to keep it safe for the residents and for everyone who visits. But there were delays. Um, and then when we finally did open, Corona hit. So we were open for about three weeks and then we shut down and then we opened again. Um, so in that time when we shut down, it actually turned out that my husband, who um, was deployed in Afghanistan at the time, he um, he was away. I was raising our daughter alone and opening a business and working full time as an associate. It was just a big mess, but he's the sweetest man in the world. And he's always been so supportive. And he was planning to come back earlier than um, his, his normal, his return home date um, to surprise me for our grand opening celebration. Um, but unfortunately that got canceled because of Corona and then his, his return home ended up getting delayed anyway. So it was a big mess, but he made it home. He's home safe now. Um, my daughter and him are getting along great and um, he's healthy. So he just had a shoulder surgery because he had a little injury when he was, when he was uh, deployed, but everything's good now. So we're back in business and, and he's back home safe. So that's what's important. Absolutely. Well, kudos to you for juggling all of that between starting a new business, being a, a single parent and the stress of having someone abroad. That's a lot. To it, it was a lot, but there's, there's always people who have a lot less doing a lot more. So, you know, it, it really wasn't so bad. And my husband really was very supportive the whole time he was deployed. Like if I had an issue with construction, he would be there on the phone calling them in the middle of the night, his time, you know, cause the time difference. And he's just the most wonderful man in the world. <laughs> well, that is wonderful. That, I love that. And I haven't met him, but I know that um, as we were talking about prior, you had suggested a Saturday for your ribbon cutting, which is something we don't usually do. We try to do them during regular working hours, 
So I had emailed you that, like maybe we could try another time the following week. And then I was so moved because he sent me a private email to say, I'm Dr. Judy's husband and I'm in Afghanistan and we're trying to have a family surprise and I'm going to come home early for the ribbon cutting. So it's okay if you can't come. However, please, could you encourage her to stick with that date so I can surprise her? And that just made my week. I was so thrilled that this was, I was going to be able to be part of this like wonderful reunion. And I was disappointed that we weren't able to have the ribbon cutting because of COVID, but I thought that was so thoughtful. And the fact that he was going to come across the globe for the ribbon cutting, I thought, of course, we'll do it on a Saturday if that's, you know, there's an important reason. So I'm sorry we couldn't do it. But now that you're open, we could always do a socially distanced one um, yeah. as a follow up. Yeah, maybe we could do like a one year anniversary or something. We made yeah, it the first absolutely. year of a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, well, it was so sweet of him. And I'm so glad to hear that he's home safe and sound and back, back at the home. Uh, locally so you guys are reunited yeah yeah I'm in a way I'm kind of glad he didn't surprise me because I didn't need everyone seeing me cry <laughs> that would have been a lot well the thought that counts so he gets yeah. uh, the good karma of being so thoughtful and trying to execute on this um, great plan yeah so, and thank you so much for being willing to come in on a Saturday even though it didn't work out that yeah, would have been great yeah <laughs> Well, when I heard the story, I thought, usually we don't. And I told my board privately, I said, we're not going to announce how he's going to be there, but we're going to do it on a Saturday. And that's, you know, it's not our standard plan because we have this great opportunity to have him, you know, attend from overseas on deployment. So, yeah. So too bad we couldn't get it together. But again, it was a, it was a fun thing to be a part of while the best laid plans came together. <laughs> Um, I would love to take another peek at your comfort dogs and yep. hear a little bit about their names and what kind of dogs they are and share yeah. some more. Yeah, let me get the computer over this. Echo. 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 Um, they're really great with anxiety. It makes such a difference having these two in the room just to get a good time. Most of the time, they're just a good dog. So, <laughs> this is their life. But they're doing pretty good. Okay, but they're doing pretty good. They are adorable. Your, your phone or your um, speaker cut out for a second. Did you say they're boys or girls or one of each? Oh, uh, one of each. So Sage is the girl. She's smaller and she's five years. She's five years old. And then Echo, the boy, the, the fatter one, he's uh, three years old. So they're really good dogs. Echo and Sage. I love those yeah. names. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a fun. Those are fun. I like that a lot. Thank you. <laughs> well, I really appreciate your taking the time out of your busy day with patients and everything else in life um, to join our shop local program. I'm so happy you chose North Reading for the location of your new practice, Inertia Dental. And just for people listening, I want to shout out that it's at 291 Main Street across from Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen right in North Reading. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Um, I know we'll share the contact information up on the screen. And again, welcome. And I'm so glad you were able to join us. And thank you for your time and all of your, um, your great stories you were able to share. It's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Great. And I hope we meet in person very soon. Yes, me too. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thanks again for joining the Shop Local program.